Welcome to Think Alive. We're Sharon and Andy, just two people with a dream and a vision of restoring our traditional stone-built farmhouse in southern Spain, transforming it into a beautiful off-grid home and sharing our journey with you. Good morning everyone. Good morning everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Another boiling hot day on the Finca. And um, we've got Dolly Tickle to sleep under the table here next to us. The world's cutest cat. Um, <laughs> right, you're covered in bits as well. Um, right, today I'm going to be carrying on with that oil and that worktop, the never ending worktop oiling mission. Yeah. Um, I unfortunately have got loads of domestic chores to catch up on with having. Um, yes, we have normal poorly, things to do as well. Poorly pup last week. Um, I kind of was concentrating on bear and didn't do much else. So I've uh, got lots of things I need to catch up on. Yeah, we need to go shopping for we things, man shopping at least, yes, anyway. Yes, I'm up, not getting involved with that. To pick up enough, a lot of stuff to get that finished. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, let's crack on. So this is still really soaking in. Um, this is coat number four. It'll stop eventually. Should be starting to look nice though soon. Very nice. And there it is. I don't know if you can see that at all. Um, I think one more coat might do it. Um, it's not soaking in half as much as it was now, um, fantastic. So we'll let it dry and then um, we'll see. Time once again to get our temporary sink unit out of the way and um, see what we need to do with this. I can pick it up and there we go. Okay. So before we get to it, I'm just going to give this a bit of a clean. It's where we made the floor, you know, and uh, pointed it and now it's dry. Um, it's a bit of a mess down here, so I'm just going to get this cleaned. Um, there's not a massive amount I can do with this until I've got the sink. Oh, by the way, I can definitely confirm it. It's much warmer wearing white inside than black. Um, I'm actually probably going to go and change this in a, in a minute. Um, I, can, I need to cut back a gap in this where the, the tap, the faucet's going to go through. Um, and then obviously put a leg or something underneath each side or maybe even a diagonal. Um, that might be a bit easier, I don't know. I'm going to take this front off because it's got to come off anyway. Um, if you saw the last one, I took the screws out of it and um, it didn't move because I glued it. So I've got a small case opener. There we go. I've got a bigger one if I need it. <laughs> and um, I can cut this side back as well um, for that also. I don't want to disturb this too much. There we go. There it goes. Okie dokie. Right, I think I can also probably do this side as well. Um, it's difficult to gauge, so we're going to put big fat legs and things in. This back staying though, apart from that modification, and this side staying as well. They're perfectly level and perfectly good to go. Um, so, what to do first? Um, I think I'll, I'll cut this back. Um, right, I thought I might be able to get it with the, um, the zipper getting so the saws all, but I'm not going to be able to get him, probably not without marking this. So I'm just going to use the, the old multi tool. Um, get it cut. So moving round, um, I'm going to put a post in here because when I cut this, obviously it's not going to be supported. It did have a fixing in there, but when we put the window in, um, it came out. So I can't be bothered putting one back in. So I'm just going to put a post in here that I can use to fix. To clip these, my tap things. My tap's only going to be there, so that'll be perfect. Um, I think I'll probably just use this as well. It's a bit curly. Look at that, <laughs> but um, it'll do for a for a leg in there. So I'll get it marked, get it cut, and um, get it in. Right. So the piece of wood's cut. I'm just going to pop a screw through it. So the 
bit I've just cut off that. I've just cut 45 degrees either end. I'm just going to pop him in there and um, pop a screw to it. That'll support this side clamps again, of course, and get it in there. <sighs> Nearly. And um, he's got him a bit. I'll just fire a screw through there. Right, top one's in. Get one through here. <laughs> okay, someone asked why I don't use an impact driver because um, they haven't got one. And that one just spun in there because they didn't have it on the torque set and they had it on drill. Silly boy. Um, yeah, I do find this on the torque set, it all works fine. So, if someone wants to send me an impact driver, feel free. Right, now we can cut this bit out. kindling for the fire. Excellent, right, we've got a good gap there, now we can get our taps in easily. I'm actually going to leave this one for now, A, because when we put the new sink on and put the old one back on, it'll hold it up, and then because we're going to have big chunky legs down the front, and um, without having the other the new worked up in, we're not exactly sure where they're going to go. Um, so I'm just going to leave that for now. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to have a see how our linseed oil is doing, see if it's dry enough for another coat, yeah, um, to the workshop. And it's still wet, um, it takes so much longer to, like, once you've got the wood actually sealed, it takes so much longer to dry, they reckon, well, 24 hours ideally. I was hoping they might be able to sneak one in, but there's still some quite wet patches on it, which is good, which means my next one will probably be the last one. Um, I hope it's so anyway because I want to get it fitted. Um, cool, so we'll leave it a bit longer. In the meantime, there's not a lot we can do here until um, we've got the new one ready to go in. Um, we're about as far advanced as we can get. We've put the temper one back in and it's still just about working. Right, so this is our 24 hours drying now. It's getting there. Um, I think patience is the key here, as it is to a lot of these things. To get the results we want, we just need to keep going and be patient. This is coat number five. I've treated myself to a new cloth as well. Eventually it will stay on the surface and give us a nice, I don't know, semi-gloss satin sheen. We just keep going. There we go, coat number five. I've tried to put it on a bit thicker. Um, it'll just take longer to dry though, of course. Um, so, um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I found some stuff to repair the sink. Um, a little thing by Patex, it's like a, um, a, a gum thing, a two-part epoxy that you mix up. Um, it's white, so we'll see what that happens with that. And, and we're off into um, town, big town shortly. I'm going to picking up Chris from Tales from the Cave side. We're going to get him some guttering and um, we're going to get all the bits we need, the tap, faucet, um, waste bits for the double sink. Um, I've got a massive list of stuff, plus stuff to finish off all the cabinetry as well. Um, so when we get back, hopefully this will be nearly dry.
I mean, Dole was, Dole was shut up at last. <laughs> he likes to bark a lot, he's very noisy. Um, I just thought I'd have a quick nosy in the caves while I'm here. Hello, Loke. Hello, Dover. <laughs> um, wow, what a job. <laughs> it is, they are getting there, though. Loki <laughs> down, mate. I mean, how do they get anything done? I've got no idea at all. So, um, Chris is coming with me, he's hiding around the corner. Um, we're gonna go and get him some guttering because he needs some for the front of the house. We're gonna have a look. Yes. Look at this. He's not like you can take So he needs to sit and look steady. than me. <laughs> it looks like they're gonna be having an extensive guttering job coming up soon as well. Um, there's the one length on that one behind me and then two lengths going up on the, the roofs there. And that's what we're going to pick up because they won't fit in um, Chris and Lillian's car. <laughs> no, definitely so, not. We've got an ordinary saloon car. It hasn't, it hasn't even got a, a, a boot that opens at the back properly. So there we go. So, so much appreciated. We've got the trailer we've just seen. So let's get going. Right, we just got into hell check. I'm riding shotgun. Shotgun. <laughs> Wingman. Yes. I'm going for a fat max. Be rude not to. Oh, the craziest things on earth. Yes, there no, are no. There are no rules. No, no lane discipline. He's got his hammers off. <laughs> yes, you do right. Going straight on. No. So, fair support call, that little building there to check it out, make sure it's uh, providing sustenance for people in the correct manner. Critique their serving prowess. Is it quiet? It should be at this time. Yes, it's not, it's not too bad at all. But we have a trailer on, so we'll park, we'll park here. <laughs> yes. Drive it like you stole it. We'll go over there in a minute. Alright. Oh, Leroy Merlin's. That's where we is. Just at that place. Right, suitably sustained. Oh. Ready for the oh, about to get run over by somebody. Right, in we go. Oh yes. Right, have we sorted? We're set. Got our gutter in. Yes indeed. Got all the stash. The back of the car, boxes of tricks and things, all the bits of stash. And sounds in the trailer. Awesome job. Nice to strap down, nice and secure. Hopefully. Yes. Go. Yeah, I can. <laughs> I, he's fine. Let's get out of right, it. let's go. Right, we've made it back to Chris and Lillian's. Yes. Just to get unloaded now. Oh, there we go. Watch your eyes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Right. <laughs> Safe. Safe. Some of that is. Yeah, it's a lot more construction crops. <laughs> Here you go, Lillian, you've got your first didgeridoo. Thank you very much, just what I always wanted. So, whilst Andy's been away, um, this courtyard has been driving me absolutely bonkers. Um, we love this tree, it's so pretty and it provides excellent shade. Um, but as you can see, the blossom's dying off now and it was just a carpet. I can't show you a before picture because Andy had taken the camera with him. Um, however, I can show you the two buckets of um, bits that I've swept up this morning. And um, to say I'm hot is an understatement, mm -hmm. but it's done now. Unfortunately, they forecast rain this weekend, so it'll probably be as bad again on Monday. But at least it's done for now. 
Um, and speaking of the weekend, little chat popped by whilst Andy was out with um, the programme for this week's weekend's fiesta in our little village. Um, so from the 26th to the 28th and he's given me a programme. Um, the big float parade is on Saturday. Um, and as I say, sod's law, they've forecast um, rain for Friday and Saturday. We've had one millimetre in 101 days, something like that. And because it's a fiesta, it's going to rain this weekend, can you believe it? But anyway, courtyard's clean once again. Um, and I'm going to crack on now with my other chores. Right, so the next morning, these two are back together. We had them in the courtyard last night. and. Um, Put, we're going to put Bruce to bed um, and Bear was whimpering and whining and crying and everything so yeah he wanted to go back home basically with his brother come here hello Brucey um, so I'm going to take him for a walk let him have a run up in the hills and then um, carry on shall we go <laughs> come on then come on good boys hang on a minute that's it come on well that was a successful mission, um, yes I'm so pleased they're both getting along so well now, it kind of just goes to confirm it was the medication because they're loving each other again like they always did, um, very good boy so they can have the breakfast now and then they'll sleep through the heat of the day, um, I need to unload the car now, we've got computer problems, the thing's been an absolute pain, um, it's time for a new one, um, Chris it turns out from Tales from the Cave side, um, likes to build computers so he's going to spec build me a Finca Life supercomputer um, so I'm just going to pop, I'm going to pop into, need to pop into town get some dog food and some bones for them and then go and see Chris and get this stuff ordered and then I come back, well, first of all I need to unload the car actually because I didn't do it last night Big pack of tongue and groove, small pack of tongue and groove, a nice tap, a faucet. Um, some more of these drawers that we did upstairs, we very quite like those. Um, and a new toilet seat for the downstairs loo, because the, the five euro one that came with it is standard crack, so we treated ourselves. Um, right, oh, we've got a bag of, bag of assorted um, fittings. Yeah, plumbing fittings, basically. Right, I'll get rid of the trailer and go over to Chris's and then we'll have a look at this work when I get back. Right on, so the parts are ordered to build our supercomputer. That's exciting. Um, back to this, um, I'm still not totally happy with it, so I'm going to give it coat number six. We're doing a bit of um, reading. Apparently they can need up to 15 to 20 coats. Um, and we'll carry on. We'll get there with it eventually. Give it another one though, I'll be sick of seeing this. Should be lovely though when it's done. Can't wait. I'm just being patient. There we go, another coat done. Um, it's an experiment as much as anything, just to see what we can make it look like um, using totally natural materials and things um, it's, uh, supposedly if you get enough on it you can get to a stage where you can buff it um, with a soft cloth I tried buffing it just before and it's not for buffing yet so we keep going with it so we're on the subject of experimentation um, if you remember if you saw the video we put this window in a while ago and when it rains really heavily on this side 
it actually seeps in a bit of water at the bottom. Um, it's got a, it's on a good bed of mortar and everything, but no idea why. We assume it, it's not coming through the window because it's new. Um, so all we can presume is it's coming in through the bottom here. So I'm going to make some mastic. Obviously, mastic is the answer to to sealing it up. Hello, Tabby. Tabby's helping. Um, but I'm going to make traditional burnt sand mastic, um, which has been used for hundreds of years, and um, it's supposed to be really good. Let's go and have a look. So what is burnt sand mastic? Um, it's a very old traditional method of sealing windows and door frames and stuff, and it basically consists of burnt sand, um, which is sand that's been, I guess, kiln, dried, or something to get all the moisture out of it. I've just left some out in the sun um, for a bit. It does the job equally as well. It's that hot here. And um, oh, I guess it does the job equally as well. It's crusty and crispy and that. And you add, simply add linseed oil to it um, to the ratio of 200 millimetres of linseed oil to a litre of um, sand. So what I've got, I've got, I'm just doing a small mix as a tester. I've got some new, different linseed oil that we're testing because it's easier for us to get. Um, so I'm just going to add um, the oil to this and see what happens. I need about, for 250ml I'm going to need 50ml of um, linseed oil, aren't I? See if we can guess it. We'll just add it slowly until we get the consistency that we want. Should be quite dry and sticky like a like a putty basically. All putty is standard old traditional putty is calcium carbonate which is chalk and linseed oil. So let's see what we get. I'll have a mess with it. Okay, I've got something there that sort of resembles um, a bit of putty perhaps. Um, I'm gonna go and try it on the window. See what happens. We've nothing to lose. Right, okay, so I've had enough to do along the bottom and up the two sides. I have no idea how it's going to work. Um, I don't even know if my sand was dry enough. Um, if it doesn't do so well, I'll dry it off properly um, next time, a bit more next time. It's a bit of a rush job, this, for the sake of experimentation. Um, so, yeah, we'll just leave that and um, we'll report back. Yeah, this window itself shouldn't be leaking. It's got a seal on the outside. It's got a seal all the way around the inside and um, it's got a drain hole there for the water to escape to anyway, as I'll do all normal windows. Um, so, yeah, we don't know, it's a bit of a mystery. It just seeps in a little bit at the bottom here. Um, so, like I said, that's supposed to be long, slow, slow drying and then remain flexible for a long, long time after. Never used it before, like I said, so we'll see what happens. Well folks, that brings us to another exciting episode. Not yeah. very exciting today at all, was it? Here's that Abby, she's the world's <laughs> fattest cat. She's aren't the you? fattest one, yeah. She's very pretty though. She is. Um, girl. Yeah, we can't do any more. Um, might be a bit of a shorter video because we're waiting for our experiments to dry. Yes. Are you wriggling? Are you not happy? Go on then, <laughs> put you down. Um, yeah, we've got to wait and see how that turns out. Wait and see how the worktop turns out. But it shouldn't be long now and be able to ramp on and get that unit done. Yeah. So, yep. Thank you for watching. As Indeed. always, thank you to all our supporters. And we will see you on Sunday. Sunday. Well done. <laughs>